Welcome to Obscured Reality with Mark and Stephanie. From UFO sightings to the lost city of Atlantis, from alien encounters to the living dead, each episode will leave you questioning reality. If you're ready to explore the eerie, tune in to Obscured Reality, where mysteries come alive. So, it's almost like the these lights are somewhat changing. Mm-hmm. Maybe, um, and that could fall in line with aircraft. However, that f- also falls in line. If you happen to, let's say you do have an object like this with the five lights, as you see here, um, it's all going to be dependent on distance, altitude, and the angle of the object. It could be moving straight towards you and never vary from that path. However, if the nose is angled up a little, or angled on the side, those light, it's going to, you know, it could appear as something completely different. Okay. Mm-hmm. So just keep that in mind. I remember talking with Bobby as we were watching it. We are saying, what, what could that possibly be? And I, I said, well, maybe it's a formation of helicopters. And, you know, then I'm looking at the lights. And as they're getting further and further apart, uh, the relationship between the lights never changed. So that's important. A couple things there. He clearly is not looking for some otherworldly explanation. He mm-hmm. said, he even said it. Um, I figured it was airplanes or helicopters, but the thing is from our vantage point, those lights never strayed from each other. They always appeared to stay about the same distance apart. Can you do that with airplanes or helicopters? Yes, you can. Much more difficult, and especially at night. I was going to say you have to be very well trained. Yeah, but, um, you know, especially at night, that's going to be a little harder to do. Um, For sure. But, you know, let's see. They got further apart, but the individual distance between the lights always remained, so to speak, in the same relationship. They were perfectly even. They didn't move up or down, and I'm saying, wow, if this is a formation of aircraft, who's ever flying this, I don't know how they're staying so tight in formation. So as it got closer and closer and the lights were further and further apart, I began to think, well, maybe this is you know, some kind of uh, object and that uh, it, it had to be pretty big. When it was about just a couple miles away, we're watching it, all of a sudden I caught the image of what it was. I could see its outline. Now, this uh, is not a picture that they took. This isn't a picture of it. This is just a drawing or rendering, right? Mm -hmm. Um, But I got to point out, (laughs) I have a hard time looking at this picture without noticing the stuff on the left there and (laughs) what that looks like to me. We'll talk after the show. I can't stand you right now. I didn't see it like that, and now I <laughs> I can't stand you. Hey, that's now all laugh, I guys. see. That's all I see. That's all, that's I, see all I see. Um, I don't know why, but uh, let me hold the camera down here and get a shot of that V up there. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong V. Let's continue. Uh, thank you. It was Wrong almost v. the same exact color at the, of the sky, but because it was passing over stars... The stars were being blocked out and then come back after it passed. And it- the stars were being blocked out. As this thing went over, in between the lights, something between the lights was blocking out the sky above. It looked like a, an actual very geometric carpenter square, like an equilateral triangle without the bottom. And in each arm were two lights evenly spaced and in the very tip was was one single light and these lights were perfectly round and perfectly white light the tip of this thing was like as sharp as a tack and the two tail ends were squared off perfectly as it came closer and closer we realized that it was coming straight at us it was going to come right over us and He was able to see enough detail in the sky that this thing blacked out. He could see these were perfectly straight edges that the back of each of the points, um, where are we at? 453. 
the back right here was flat. It, it was a straight line, you know, it went straight back, yeah. 90 degree angle, 90 degree angle. He was able to see that. Like he's given a lot of detail about yeah, something is. that, you know, was a 10 warthogs or flares. Uh, yeah, I don't think so. Mm -mm. was going to come right over us. And for some reason, I don't know how, how it happened, but it seemed to have dropped down in altitude. And now it was literally coming down the street. And the kids, as they saw it, they started jumping up and down because it was going very, very slow. And it looked like, hey, this thing is going to come over us and stop. And every jump they took, they were, when they landed, they were one jump closer to running in the house. It was going so slow that it looked like when it got directly over, we thought it was going to stop. I'm sorry, but A-10 Warthogs can't fly that slow. Crap. Well, they can, but uh, before they get to that speed, they're going to just fall straight out of the sky, right? They're not going to hit this low speed until they hit the ground. Yeah. You know, this isn't airplanes, um, but helicopters may be, right? Mm, yeah. They can hover, yeah. so yeah. Well, right. Yeah. They could fly as slow or as fast as they want up to mm -hmm. whatever speed that particular helicopter can fly. Mm -hmm. Let's continue. Hopefully he says something about choppers. And I'm standing there now. I walked over in front of, right, right on the edge of the street, looking up at this thing go by. And I'm looking at the outer edge of this, of this wing. And I could see way, way down the block, six, five, six hundred feet away. I couldn't actually see the tail. I saw the third light. Five, six hundred feet away down the block, this thing was so wide, he could only see the third light. So the center light and mm -hmm. then the two coming down the V. He couldn't see those. This thing was so damn wide, he couldn't see those last lights on it. Now, I'm guessing they were blocked by, there, there's, you know, Houses, from what he said, there's hills. Point. It's a hilly area, right? So, makes sense. But he's saying five, six hundred feet down the block, he couldn't see it. The the last set of lights, right? That means mm -hmm. five to six hundred feet down the block in the opposite direction, he couldn't see that one. You're talking minimum his just from what his description is, thousand feet. Mm. Okay, and it's going by the outer edge of this thing was so perfectly straight, dark, almost the same color as the sky, but you could see the stars, and then you couldn't see the stars. And as it's going by, it wasn't fluttering at all. It was so smooth, it almost looked like a computerized graphic. The kids out in the middle <laughs> of the street said, hey, look up inside, in between the two arms. And looking at the stars inside, they looked like, like some kind of distortion, not a heat distortion. It just did not look as clear as the stars. So we're at 612. Let's go back and look at this image. 612. What he's saying is in between this arm and this arm. So this dead open space here. Is that cool? In between the space here, it was like a disturbance, <laughs> like a, a, a distortion. Tell me that's not weird. That you tickled them, yes. And also <laughs> that uh, that is strange that there would be a distortion between the two arms. Um, yeah. You've got me on the tickle part, man. Yeah, I, th this guy's not... Oh. I mean, you, you can't say he's making it up. You can't say he's not making it up. You never know. Mm -hmm. He sounds very truthful. He sounds very honest to me. I've not... <sighs> I, I've watched the video a few times recently as well as in the past. Mm -hmm. I'm not getting any red flags from this guy, at least yet, um, that he's full of crap. Um, you know, you look at the sky and a lot of times the sky kind of looks like this kind of bluish, maybe a little darker than this, but, uh, kind of bluish dark. Um, if you have an object that's this dark and low come over, yeah, it's going to block out the stars above mm -hmm. makes sense. But, the contrast of the sky above and this object, he can see a distortion in here, which is interesting to me. Let's continue. On the outside, 
And he's actually out in the street running after this thing. That's how slow it was going. The kids thought it was going about 10 or 15 miles an hour. And this last light came down, and Bobby and I were just standing there, and it went right over us, and it looked like this big circular hole of pure white light. It looked like flore beyond fluorescent, almost like little particles of light, and the light was stuck up inside. It was almost like it was being held inside. There was no glass on it, and there was no light that I noticed around us on the ground, but it was really, <clears throat> really, really bright. Then the tail end of this thing went by like that, and I saw very absolute sharp edge went by, and as, this, as it did, the stars unfolded after it. We live up on about, probably about 1,200 feet above sea level. We're in a little valley above Phoenix, and surrounded by this valley are like little mountain peaks, and there's this yes. one, two peaks, and in the middle of it, a little a hill. This thing went right through the crack in the mountain. It flew. Now, I believe this is the same guy I saw an interview of, um, decades ago um more than a decade ago um he was out i remember he was out in the street talking uh to someone during this interview and he was pointing out those hills mm -hmm. now my recollection of that interview with this one i don't think he's saying it literally went it was i don't think he's saying it was below the top of these hills and went between it it sounds like it here and maybe that is what he means but my recollection of the previous interview I had seen is these two hills. And I explained this to you a few episodes ago as well, mm -hmm. Stephanie. My understanding of what he said from the first interview was, here's these hills like this. Whoop, and it came right through them. It didn't actually go through them. It was above them. But these two hills are his points of reference. Right. At whatever altitude this mm -hmm. thing was, whether it was below the tops of those hills or above, he, it, they went through the... Yeah. yeah what he's I, saying yeah. is, this is how I got my estimation on the mm -hmm. size. And that's very good because the interview I had seen, these people went out there and they did the math on it and um, looked at those hills, how far apart they are, the distance of those hills from where his house is and where they were standing. Mm -hmm. And they as well came up with this, what seems to be ridiculous ridiculous size of this craft or object or whatever the hell it was wild yeah so let's keep going right yeah. through there it didn't go over the top it just barely fit I, it kind of was in such a way now it was tilt so he did say it didn't go over the top it went between that's not what i recall from the first interview i had heard um i could have heard incorrectly but that's not what i gathered from that but either way this is even better because now if he can describe this to people on the ground at that location of how he knows it was below the tops of those hills, now you can get a much, much, much more accurate size of this thing. Because now you know the tops of these hills are this far apart. If it was only five feet below the tops, here's about how big it was. And that's crazy because this thing is apparently massive. Mm, it's probably yeah. just going straight because now I could see the lights from the backside underneath. It went out straight over towards uh, the, the airport, right to the right side of Squaw Peak. And then I lost the lights in the whatever lights were flying around in the atmosphere disturbance or whatever. <clears throat> So when I saw this technology, I know there's nothing on this planet like that. There's no capacity to fly a craft. It wasn't even flying. How could something fly, be lifted by air, going that slow? Well, um, mm -hmm. blimps, balloons, we saw them in the slides, right? Yeah. But, you know, I mean, he's thinking, right? Which is good. And... Um, you know, he might not be thinking about blimps and balloons and things like that. And of course, back then, nobody probably ever really saw, um, I don't know what you'd call them, balloons like we saw from JP Aerospace a few yeah. minutes ago, right? I'm sure nobody really knew of that then. Um, I mean, I, I'm sure a lot of people don't even know about it now, honestly. Right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I didn't. 
I yep. laughed because I looked like a fucking piece of a fucking bounce house. Like, yep. <laughs> you know, <laughs> had I right. known what it was, I would have been like, oh, yeah. <laughs> right. But at night, how can you tell? You can't. Exactly. Yeah. So let's go. Not possible. Not possible whatsoever. This thing was not flying. It was cruising with some kind of ability. I don't know. It was absolutely perfect, under control, powerful, smooth, quiet. And I looked at that and I said, boy, I said to my wife, I said, whoever's got this technology is in cahoots with God. How? why don't you tell? Uh, we were freaking out because we had, like in 1996 is when Independence Day came out and I was 10 years old. So when you see Independence Day and then you see this like craft like coming over your house, you kind of, you know, get a little scared because it's like, is it going to stop? Or are we going to be the people underneath going, oh, no. We, like you got those chills in the back of your neck where you get all goosebumpy and you your hair up, stand Scotty. up on end. The point at which we started getting excited I'm sorry, was, was so after funny. it had gone about halfway over and basically we got the feeling that it was just going to keep going, which was much of a relief, you know, that it wasn't going to stop. Because if it did, I don't know what we'd do. Just go, uh, okay. That's when we were like, you know, oh, let's go after it, you know. So we literally start running down the street. Dad, dad, come on, get in the car, we chase it. And he was just like, no, no. He was just looking, you know, looking at it, and we're like, oh. And my nephew Damien said that he could probably could could have thrown like a like a tennis ball or a rock up and hit it. So I mean, you're talking about kids, ten years old, um, and they're able to tell that, at least from their visual perspective, that this thing looks so low mm-hmm. that. Yeah, it'd be a long shot. We'd be able to hit it with a rock, but it's so low that it seems like you could. You're right. I mean, there's yeah. multiple people saying this, you know? Mm-hmm. It was that close. At the time, there was this house that was being constructed up on the hill, and there was a telephone pole, and the craft flew, like, right over the top. There was no sound. Like, even the, na- the neighborhood was really quiet. Like, the only sound that there ever was was that there was a small, you know, just like a small propeller plane that flew over the top of it pretty high up it looked like this big in comparison um but uh yeah that was the only sound at any point when hal came to get me in the house and i was cooking dinner he just told me that there were lights outside and so i went running out the door looking at the lights over yeah hal they're called the street lights you dumbass stop drinking that whiskey the mountain i saw the lights then you know at that point and i sat with them and watched them just ex- exactly as Tim described, when it was coming up towards us and it seemed like it was very high and I could see it just as clear as a bell that it was shaped, what I said at the time, was like a carpenter square. It looked like a flying carpenter square. All of a sudden, you know, we, it seemed like I either looked away and I blinked and it was, you know, right upon us and then coming right down the street. And as, uh, as it left, and Tim and I were looking up into the light wells. I mean, these these were circular light wells that were we could not even estimate really how deep they were since we didn't know exactly how far away it was. Yet yeah, something about what they were seeing told them that these lights were set into this object. They weren't like protruding like with a lens, a glass lens covering the light or mm-hmm. anything. It, it, multiple people here saying... It clearly looked like these lights were set into, in, yeah, inside, into up it. in the craft. But the lights looked like they were at least 15 feet, you know, wide. Oh, my God. 15 feet wide? <laughs> oh. So, you find me an A-10 warthog that even sitting on the ground with some form of bright white spotlight, landing light, whatever the hell was on those at the time, if that at all um sitting two feet away from it on the ground looks like the light is 15 feet wide give me a break right i mean like i am looking at my room and i'm like damn life's as big as my room like what the fuck Uh uh-huh yep so and and that's from whatever altitude this was which to them was very low Mm. Imagine if they were able to reach up and touch it. If it were that low, how big are they really? <laughs> if you they know? touched it, they probably would be yeah. sucked right up. 
There'd be no, inter- there'd be no interview. <laughs> nope, no interview. It never would have I don't happened. Know how deep? Because nope. all we could see was the white light inside the wells, and then as it proceeded over the mountain, just missing the tops, like Hal said, um, I looked at the the lights in front of it. You might say, because I wanted to see if I could see the top of it, and as it was going through, I could see a slight mound to the point you know, which would have been the front end of it. It just seemed like a very thin craft. When A slight mound on the very front of it, almost like a cockpit, possibly, or something else, maybe some type of pod for some type of sensors or camera equipment, right? Y- yeah. I mean, that's, you look at an Apache, you look at other aircraft that have that stuff. That's what you get. You get pods, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, not saying that's what it was, but let's keep going. The right arm was coming over the house. We were looking at it and I, I was looking at the left arm and it just went completely over towards the mountain that I made a comment then I said, Oh my God, how big is this thing? Because it just seemed to cover the whole entire neighborhood. You know what I said as it went over after seeing that little plane? I said, you could fit 10 stealths on one arm. I guesstimated that it was uh, each arm was about 700 feet. And if it was an equilateral uh, triangle in the sense, then the distance between the tails would have been about 700 feet. When we talk about this, people get picky. They say, okay, so about 700 feet. I, I, distance between the tail end, so the farthest points on this object about 700 feet. Um, That's fine. Um, I've heard, and we heard from the news report as well, people saying, uh, you know, a mile-ish. I could have sworn I heard this guy um, in that previous interview say something about a mile or so as well. But Mm -hmm. it has been said. We heard it in the um, news report at the beginning of the video video as well. But let's keep going. We're almost done. Well, you know, was it, 200 feet? Was it 182 feet away? Uh, is it 12 feet wide? You know, et cetera. Listen, it was freaking huge. Have like- it was going really <laughs> slow. It had these big lights in it. it. It didn't make a sound. That's the point. It was there. We saw it. There's no doubt in our minds whatsoever what we saw. My wife and I work. He goes to school. That's our lives. We're normal folks. We're nothing special. He sounds 100% honest to me, especially saying stuff like that. Now, you know, there's plenty of people out there that would say, well, of course, that's what you would say if you were lying just to try and coax people into your little lie. Mm. No, he's, mm. he's, he's almost getting upset. Look, we're not in this for anything. We don't know what the hell's going on. We probably would have rather not seen it. This is what we <laughs> do. I, I work nine to five. My wife does whatever. My son goes to school. That's us. That's all we do, guys. Um, we're not making this shit up. Okay. Um, Mm -hmm. well, you know, when it first happened, I think we were so awestruck by the whole event. (laughs) We didn't forget, but we didn't know what to do. You know, it was like, you know, I'd already, by then I came back in, we all came back in and we were talking about it. And then we all kind of got silent and we were all sitting at the table and this was, you know, Hal, Tim, and Damien, our grandson, who was then 14, and myself, and we we didn't know what to even say to one another. You know, we were just kind of like sitting there. And then we said, what do we do? You know, I mean, who do we call? You know, we didn't know what Ghostbusters. To do. And so we didn't call anybody because, well, you have that thinking. stigma, you know, it's like. <laughs> you, you trust, you know, your family. And, you know, if, if we say we saw something, you know, then we did. And, you know, they're, they'll support us either way. There was this kid that lived the, just a few blocks from me, and uh, my stepson knew him. He brought the kid over to my house, and the kid did these drawings, and it was exactly what we saw. So I ended up going over to this kid's house uh, and meeting his father, and both of them described what we saw, but they saw it from, like, a couple blocks below. I personally, and I know they feel the same way, it doesn't matter to me whether you believe me or not. It doesn't. It only matters to you. Because we know what we saw. We know what we have. You need to see that. You don't know what you saw, but you know you saw something, and you know what the something looked like. 
That's what yeah, he's trying I to say is, think I don't give a shit if you believe me or not. Yeah. We know we saw something. We know what it looked like. And you can't tell me, <laughs> he's not saying this, but you can't tell me it was flares. You can't tell me it was a fucking mm-hmm. warthog because it's clearly not. You need to right. understand that. That's it. So that's where our attitude is at. So, you know, 10 years, nothing happening. And all of a sudden, here we are talking about it. Fine. We'll talk about it. We'll tell you exactly what happened. 10 years. Yeah. Okay. Bam, guys. I mean, woo. What do you do with that? Let's go. Um, I'm just going to bring these uh, slides back up just so we can get this balloon. Um Back on my the bounce screen. house balloon. Here we go, right now. Now, imagine this. There's my bounce house. And that they've made it larger than this. I believe the site website said this was 100 to 150 feet ish. Yeah, um, the small ascenders are used f- as X planes for research. For yeah, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't tell you right there, but. You, you yeah, can, no, I, yeah, no, 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 no. It's this just, is from JP Aerospace website. I mean, yeah. you just scroll down the page. This is all right there on one page. Yeah, no, it just and they says give you the some of that. Sender 9 is like smaller. And blah, blah, blah. Yeah, they give you some of the info. So, you yeah. you know, um, who's to say they didn't build a bigger one? Who's to say the military, once JP Aerospace gave some of their products to them, sold um, didn't come up with something similar, but much larger. Um, we've heard in the past over the decades that I've heard, um, I'm sure some of you have that there are craft that they've been working on. And I've mentioned this in some episodes as well. Um, they believe are similar to this, essentially balloons, Mm -hmm. blimps, whatever you want to call them. Um, but massive, we're talking like yeah. what these people saw or even bigger. Okay. Now you, I don't know, man, we, we go back to coincidences. Okay. Coincidences, I think play a big role here as well. And the reason why is this line right here. Whoop. The military is trying to say, well, I don't know if the military is trying to say this or if it's other people after hearing the military are trying to say this. They're saying our A-10 Warthogs and our flares that were dropped from the Warthogs in this area where the mouse is now to Tucson, um, somewhere in there, as well as the A-10 flight of Warthogs that came through Phoenix down to the military base down there, um, that they're responsible for this. Now, an A-10 Warthog is not a quiet plane. Especially when they're shooting their guns, it's massively loud. But just this plane itself, this isn't designed for stealth. (laughs) This is designed to kill. They don't care about the noise. These things are loud. You you can't mistake that. Um, Military made no reference of these A-10s being up around Vegas and Henderson, yet that's where our first sighting is whoop all the way down and into Mexico, into Sonora, Mexico, people saw this thing. Now we don't have really good stories from the Mexico report. However, they could easily see, um, depending how close they are to the border. Of course they could easily see lights, whether it be flares, aircraft or something else in the U S right in the Southern Mm -hmm. portion there of, of Arizona. So it's important to know where this, um, report or reports from Mexico came from, um, which we just don't know. And I'd like to hear more on that. Did this actually go over their heads as well? We don't know, but coincidences, is it a coincidence Mm -hmm. that, when the military says we had warthogs up that went at least from Phoenix to Tucson and landed. And then we also, uh, were practicing with flares somewhere over there, um, Southwest to Southeast of Phoenix. Um, is it just a coincidence that (laughs) their flights or their flare drops 
coincide with this direction, this line of travel? Is it a coincidence that their craft or their flares fall in line with the timeline of sightings starting from Henderson, then Paulden and Prescott and Phoenix. And don't forget Scottsdale and Glendale and <laughs> Tucson and Mexico. And, mm. and is it a coincidence that Phoenix where the claim is that it was the warthogs and the flares falls right in between right in the middle of that entire path, that entire event line right there again how many coincidences does it take before you say this isn't a coincidence something is up it's different for every situation i can't fully knock off the flares or the a10 issue Mm -hmm. however i can't give it that much credit a10s are loud um this guy lived in the hills um just above Mm -hmm. Uh, Phoenix, right? It would have heard those A-10s. Of course, they said they were at very high altitude, of course, right? Um, But they're also coming into land at a military base right there around Tucson. That's not too far from Phoenix. Mm -hmm. Um, Are they going to be at a high altitude already? I mean, they can kind of drop and do whatever they want. It's military. It's not commercial. I get that. But when you look at this timeline and the sightings start up here in Henderson and and just boom, 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 boom. That's the timeline from top to bottom. They were seen here first, then here, then here, then here, then here, then here, then here. Keep going. The fact that Phoenix is right in the middle of that, I I can't. I'm having a hard time with the warthogs and the flare. Yeah. Um. But the other coincidence is you uh, reverse this direction. Look where these things could have come from. What do you get? Right up into Nellis, Nevada test site. Come on. My guess is what we are seeing is not something otherworldly. <laughs> sure, maybe it's based off otherworldly craft we found or shot down in the past as people have alleged with various topics regarding this actual topic, um, various stories, I should say. Mm-hmm. Um, but my guess is what we're looking at here. It's probably very similar to what was seen. Now you got to remember if the military has something like what was seen, which my guess is they do, um, the lights on the bottom. Well, first of all, the entire craft, I would highly assume is going to be black. Mm-hmm. Um, don't forget we have this uh, Vanta Black. I think it's Vanta Black is what it's it called. It is Vanta Black. Yeah, yes. that yes. shit. Crazy. The black is black. Yep. Yeah, crazy. Um, it's a literal void. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And, and now I don't know how heavy that is, that paint uh, or whatever mm. they consider that. Mm. That's something to look into. However, I don't think this was some type of airship like this that we see in the picture right here. Um, mm-hmm. Why don't I think that? These five lights, they're set in. They're not on the bottom. They're set in. Um, There's a distortion within the V right here Um, in the open area. He he said there was a clear distortion. Um, My guess is they have some type of what you might call propulsion technology. They've probably had it for some time that allows this to happen and causes the effect of distortion. Think about how many times we have heard about people seeing distortion around craft, like disc shaped objects or Tic Tacs, Mm -hmm. things like that. It's fairly common. Um, Heat also creates (laughs) distortion. Right. And in, I don't think this was an airship. I think this was some type of actual hard, solid craft. Mm. I believe if the lights were turned on, if that sun had been turned on right there, these people probably would have shit their pants. (laughs) And, you know, we've also heard about technology about them. I think 
ionizing or something, the leading edges of wings and stuff on planes. And it has something to do with the airflow and it just kills the airflow. So you don't have as much, um, friction. Yeah. Resistance. Um, so I don't know. I, I'm along the lines that this craft, whatever was seen came from here. Um, what they were doing with that craft, who the hell knows, but also think about this. If they did have some type of balloon or airship type object like Mm -hmm. this, um, you're also looking at the chance that they may have been doing testing with it up here and it somehow got away, whether it came untethered or communication stopped and just went with the wind. But that's where the wind comes in because the wind was blowing about seven miles an hour down to zero between seven to nine, 10 PM Mm -hmm. in a West, almost Northwesterly direction, just above West. Well, you got this. Yeah. Yeah. You have this balloon object or whatever it is going Southwest. Mm -hmm. I'm not seeing it. Yeah. I'm not seeing it. And you have to keep in mind, and this is why I worked this up for you guys to see right here. You have to keep in mind this entire event from Henderson down to Mexico. Well, I went down to Naco. That's as low as I could get. Cause I don't know where in Sonora the reports right. were from. Yeah. From Henderson to there as a crow flies 440 miles <laughs> to have that event happen in three hours it would have to be going at about 150 miles an hour the entire time, 150 miles an hour, the entire Entire time. time. But what about this guy? When this thing was moving 10 to 15 miles an hour, clearly very slow. Mm -hmm. What about when whatever it was over Phoenix was moving very slow or these other areas was moving very slow. That means the time in between the sightings, this thing would have had to have jumped up to a much higher speed than 150 miles an hour to make this event happen in three hours. Yeah. Right. You Mm got to subtract the amount of time it spent fucking around in each city, (laughs) just chilling out in the air, freaking people out around. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. And, and, and warthogs, they're loud, man. I'm sorry, but you know, they didn't tell us what altitude they were at. Mm -hmm. but when you're in the hills like that guy, which I'm sure, you know, he, he even said, you know, a neighbor blocked down or whatever. They saw it too. How many people saw this that never said a fucking word? Probably a lot. Uh, And how many of them live in the hills yet? We have no reportings of noise with this craft, this object, these lights, whatever the hell they were, no reports of it. Mm -hmm. What we do have reports of in the past is other craft like disc shaped objects or other things that when they are moving, when they're not just hovering, but moving, that's when people are seeing these lights, exactly what this guy described as the lights on the bottom. That's when you see that you also have to keep in mind when you hear this whole a 10 warthog explanation. Are you telling me the military is going to fly five of those in the middle of the night? Well, early evening Mm. um, with those illumination lights on just the uh, bright white light. If they have those on there, right? um, how bright would they appear? Would they have them on the whole time? Because I don't think those warthogs are flying with those. And if they are, they're probably were mounted at some point onto the landing gear, which you're not going to see until that landing gear comes down. But were they even doing that then? to see lights like we see right here. I don't, I'm not convinced at all that that is a group of warthogs Mm -hmm. Um, flares possibly. But to me, this shot looks like we're in the Hills here looking down above Phoenix. Well, exactly how far away are those if they didn't drop them directly over Phoenix and Those Hmm. don't look that high if they're directly over Phoenix. If those are directly over Phoenix right here, Hmm. um, 
what? those aren't warthogs. They, everyone would have heard that. That would have been a massive noise. Okay. Mm-hmm. None of the shit makes sense other than this right here with the timeline makes perfect sense. My bets are on the Nevada test site, Nellis area 51, that whole military government owned land. My bets are whatever this was came from there, whatever it is, you're never going to know until they're ready to tell you, which isn't going to be until they have something bigger and better, (laughs) which is probably going to be a while since it's been this long and we still don't know what the hell this is. Yeah. Um, It's our technology. Now you can argue whether that technology was a derivative of some alien technology or some ancient um, technology from beings that lived prior to humans being wiped out the first time I say the first time in air quotes, meaning if this isn't the first time, Mm -hmm. right. Um, that is a big rumor about that. So that's my guess. This is probably man-made. It came from Nevada test site and, um, who knows what the hell happened when it got down to the border, but, uh, maybe just maybe this thing landed at the military base in Tucson as well. Right. Where those eight tens landed. So, that is the Phoenix Lights. Stephanie, I want to hear what you have to say about all this. I mean... Oof. It's interesting. It is really interesting. Um, I definitely really, really like the whole... Um, like the aerodynamic company uh, with their V-shape blimp almost. Uh, and, and doing things like that, it's not the first time in our history that we've attempted to use balloons of sorts right. in order for X, Y, Z. We just didn't have the technology probably to incorporate it as well as we are now. So that's where I stand. Military? Absolutely. Um, I feel like maybe the warthogs and the flares were a distraction in particular areas. I don't know, but if that was the case, then why wouldn't they distract people directly over Phoenix? So, yes. Well, that's that's where the distraction was, was I'm, over Phoenix. This thing spent the most time over Phoenix, and the flares and, and the hovering. warthogs is what they're claiming is uh, the sightings in Phoenix. And this, this brings up another fucking point that I hate. This event has always been titled the Phoenix Lights. And I think that's completely factually false. I don't think it should be called the Phoenix lights. If anything, the Arizona lights. Yeah. Because this shit was seen from Henderson all the way down to Mexico. Well, let me explain what I mean, you know, at least at first before we uh, yeah, explain, but I'm not arguing you. It's another point I forgot about that needs to be mentioned. Yeah. (laughs) No, it again, I say that they use like the warhogs and the flares as a distraction. Uh, but they should have done it over like Phoenix. But like the, the fact that they literally had this fucking thing sitting, just chilling. Like if, I don't know if they were really going to try to use the warthog and flare excuse, at least, I don't know, have it be noisier or have like actual like planes <laughs> darting around in the sky, trying to distract, you know, people from looking at the massive, v-shaped thing that's just chilling over their house about to (laughs) suck them up you know like if you're really going to be using that excuse let's actually use it as an excuse and use them as a distraction that's all i'm saying like yeah if we're gonna do it do it but it is very interesting i do enjoy his uh detailed account as to his uh recounting of the story yeah especially i mean you don't forget something like that no, especially and, and in a know, time where you don't have cell phones, where video cameras really aren't that common in families. Because if they were interviewed no. in what ninety seven, was it? Yeah. Okay, so then it happened in eighty seven, correct? Because they said it was ten years prior. No, 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 no. This this event happened in ninety seven. Okay, so it happened in ninety seven. Okay, so they were just interviewed March ninety seven. Okay, and when were they interviewed? That I don't know. Okay, because he said like something about it happened ten years. Like, oh, you want to talk to me about it ten years later? His, I'll talk no, about no, no. it. No, no, no. His yeah, his son was ten at the time. His okay. son now looks like he's probably around twenty ish. Okay, cool, 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 cool. So yeah. if it happened in ninety six, okay, so yeah, that was a time where like 
Video cameras, there like, were video they're, cameras, they're in but... houses, but they weren't common. Like we had a like a digital camera, but it was like it, we didn't really use it because it was too yeah. expensive to use. Yeah, and they're big and bulky. Mm-hmm. VHS, mm-hmm. all that. Yeah, so it's not like someone's gonna be like. Oh. So like all you really had, you can't really run in and grab a video camera if you don't have it. So to listen yeah. to him recount that was pretty epic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He seems like a very trustworthy guy. I totally believe him. I mm-hmm. think what was seen was a hard physical craft mm-hmm. having to do with our military. Completely However, agree. probably with some type of propulsion that would seem could seem otherworldly if we actually knew what it was. And and that brings up a point as well. And and um I'll make this part short, but um, you know, I just mentioned a few moments ago, um, We've heard this in numerous UFO stories. Again, UFO, unidentified, not alien. Correct. Who knows? It could be anything. Um, that these lights, um, they come alive when the craft actually moves. That's important because what I saw at my house, just that light that night, me and uh, Mike, um, that thing was just a bright white light the entire time until Mm -hmm. it disappeared and then when it reappeared it reappeared in the same spot moving at the same speed which is impossible it tells me that it probably stopped interesting because Mm -hmm. when it stopped the light went out however when it got to its final destination which we saw i saw um it came to a dead stop and the light stayed on however within about five seconds it slowly dimmed away and went from a bright white to a light orange to a dark orange and gone. Um, and you know, what is that? If you're yeah. thinking along those lines, you could be thinking Scotty hyperspace gone, right? Ah! You know, who the hell knows? That'd be so but great. That'd be so cool. My point is I've experienced it and mm. it falls right in line with those stories and these lights, those lights, the propulsion are probably what's causing the distortion. And it's not the first time we've heard of distortion with this stuff either. It's probably some type of what we would consider or call exotic propulsion technology. Our government, our military probably knows exactly what the hell it is. Oh yeah. And it probably came from right in here somewhere. You, you tell me. No, you tell me. <laughs> So, yeah, the Phoenix Lights, I, I like this story. Mm-hmm. We're doing it again because it was a long time. It was quite a while ago when we yeah. did it, and uh, Stephanie wasn't here. Um, and I wanted to bring more detail into it because mm-hmm. it's, v- it's very important. And especially when you're hearing A-10 warthogs and flares, that just doesn't cut it for this. I'm sorry. It may account for a little bit in Phoenix. Maybe. Maybe. And I'm not even convinced of that. But it 100% cannot account for all of this. There's no way. Um, It makes no sense. So that is the Phoenix lights. If uh, something new ever comes out on this, well, maybe we'll bring it up, but um, yep. There's your path of travel right there. Boom. Mm -hmm. Henderson's right about here. All the way down to New Mexico. Flares. (laughs) Give me a fucking break guys. More hogs and flares. Oh, More hogs oh and my flares. God. Oh, yep. With that said, there's a TV monitor right there. And if it's too small for one of you to read, try watching our show on a TV or zoom in. Okay. It says obscured R1 at gmail.com. That's our email. If you have a story of your own like this, aliens, Bigfoot, shoot us an email. Type story in the subject line. Tell us your story. We will tell your story for you on here. We'll do it anonymously or not. Up to you. If you want to come on the show, super simple for you to do, let us know in the email and we'll work it out with you. Okay. And you can come on the show and tell your own story. You can do it anonymously. You can do audio only. Up to you. Um, We do the work. You do a little bit of talking. We discuss it afterwards. It'll be a good time. Like, share, subscribe, hit the bell, do all the jazz. Um, And let us know. We really want to hear your stories. With that said, the Phoenix Lights, I'm going to step outside and hope I see them next time. Peace. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check back with us often for new episodes. 
feel free to drop a comment, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Obscured Reality.